And let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's give Him adoration. Bless the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Ancient of days. Bless the one whose name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Worship Him, Worship the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning, the Ending, the One who is, the One who was, the One who is to come. Bless his holy name. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Bless, bless, bless his holy name. Worship him. He's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Give him glory, give him honor. Give him adoration. Bless him. There's no one like him. He reigns supreme. He reigns forever. Even the wind and the sea obey him. Praise him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Thank you, Father. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. says there's someone here tonight he said financial headache had led you to physical headache but he asked me to tell you that every form of headache in your life will be over tonight Thank you, Father. Daddy says there's someone here tonight that you have a great love for twins. He asked me to tell you you will have a set. me to tell someone that you are very, very worried about a relation who is totally backsliding. Daddy asked me to tell you 
i vuoi studi farlo. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Go lie at bow before him. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Jesus is a mighty God. Ask me to tell someone here tonight. He said, Before the end of the year, that will be your song. Oh, thank you, Daddy. I know your name. I know. Your name, your name is wonderful. Daddy says there are at least a dozen people here tonight. Before the end of this month, that will be your song. And so, my Father, my God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you did last year. Thank you for what you did the previous years. Thank you for what you are going to do tonight. Thank you for our tomorrow. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, Father, please save souls. Heal the sick. Set the captives free. Give us breakthroughs. Draw us closer to yourself. And let there be peace. And Father, have mercy on Nigeria. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to shake hands with three or four people and prophesy to them and say, your peace will come tonight. And then put your hands together for the Almighty and, and please be seated. Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him 
and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so faithful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Today, the wind in your life will obey Jesus. The sea will obey him. Peace be still. The crucial word here is peace. And what is peace? In the language of the layman, peace is the absence of war. Peace is the absence of war. In Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 7, Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 7, the the Bible says, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all that he commands you, he said, if enemies come against you one way, they will flee seven ways, because they will be smitten before your face. Peace is absence of war. And so you can have peace if your enemies have been scattered and your enemies will be scattered tonight. You can have peace if your enemies have been destroyed like in Daniel chapter 6, from verse 24 to 28, Daniel 6, 24 to 28, when those who threw Daniel into the den of lions replaced him there, from that time onward, Daniel was never troubled again. He had peace. You can have peace if your enemies have been paralyzed. Psalm 23, verse 5. Psalm 23, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The enemies are not dead, but they were paralyzed. So you can sit down and enjoy in peace. You can have peace if for one reason or the other God subdue all your enemies so that they can be at peace with you. They won't, they won't even think of fighting you. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7. Proverbs 16 verse 7. It says when a man's ways please the Lord. He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. The enemies will forget everything about fighting. You can have peace if you have been promoted beyond the reach of the enemies. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 6, Ephesians 2, 5 to 6, it says we are seated with Jesus Christ in the heavenly places. And where is that heavenly places? Where are we seated with him? Ephesians 1, 19 to 23, Ephesians 1, 19 to 23, says we are seated with him far above principalities and powers. So far above 
that the enemies cannot touch us. For example, in Daniel chapter 3, from verse 28 to 30, Daniel 3, 28 to 30, the enemies of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego arranged for them to be thrown into the fire. But when they came out of the fire, the king promoted them so highly that the enemies never had to trouble them again. So maybe I should start by making a decree that uh, the Almighty God will use whatever method he wants, either to scatter your enemies or destroy them or paralyze them or promote you beyond their reach. Then there is another definition of peace and that is absence of a storm. In Psalm 23, from verse 1 to 2, Psalm 23, from verse 1 to 2, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Still waters. Bible scholars said that the word still waters there means water that had been stilled. He, when he takes me to go and drink, he goes ahead to make sure there's no storm where I will be going to drink. I want to pray with all my heart for someone here tonight. That promotion that is coming your way, every storm ahead, God will steal it. Now, I've done that little bit as a Bible study. Now, we want to go into the real object or subject or whatever name you want to call it of the day and in the next one hour or so you're going to pray like you have never prayed before that is if you love yourself because a day like this comes only once in a lifetime I believe that by the special grace of God, there is somebody here who will not know war for the rest of his life. I believe there is someone who will know no storm for the rest of his life. But we're going to pray. You will need to pray. It will become clear as I go along why, why you must pray. You must pray not like ladies and gentlemen. I know this is Abuja. I know this is the city of the high and mighty. But I want you to pray like my people pray at Redemption Camp where we don't look at titles. I want you to pray tonight with all your strength. You see, because in the text we just read, there are certain things that you need to note. Jesus was in the boat. That means, if we are to use modern language, you can be a Christian with Jesus already in you and still have a storm. Jesus was in the boat. 
But the disciples did something. When that storm was about to overwhelm them, what is the thing they did? They woke him up. Thank you. The first thing you must do tonight is wake him up. It's in you. If you're a child of God, Jesus is already in you. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it's a greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's in you. There's no doubt about that. But the giant is sleeping. And you need to wake him up. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6, he said, there is, there is a gift of God that is in you. You have to stir it up. Stir it up. In Psalm 50 from verse 14 to 15, Psalm 50 from verse 14 to 15, he says in his word that if you come into the presence of God with thanksgiving, which you have already done tonight, you have praised him. And he said, provided you are not owing him, you pay your vow to the Most High, and if you have any vow which you have not paid, decide right now that as soon as you get home, you will pay. Then, he said, you call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee. Wake him up. Call on him. Call on him. Let him wake up because it is written. Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3. He said, let God arise. And his enemies will scatter. Ah, if he's sleeping, wake him up, wake him up. Ah, ah. <laughs> hey, God. This is not the night for sleeping. Wake up. And the moment he arises, what will happen to the enemies? Ah, they'll be scattered. How do I wake him up? By prayer. In Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, Jesus was passing by, minding his own business. Somebody interrupted his journey. His name is Bartimaeus. Somehow something told him, you may never have this opportunity again. Then there was a cloud there. And it was a poor beggar. There was nobody who was going to help him book an appointment to see Jesus. He cried. And Jesus woke up. He suspended everything he was doing to attend to a blind beggar. You can wake him up through praise. You've done a lot of that tonight. I thank God. I was delighted as I watched in my prayer room, as I saw young boys and young girls running around, singing and dancing. I'm delighted because I know God is pleased. You can wake him up by shouting. But you see, whatever method you use, 
That's why when it's time to pray, you're not going to pray some little, little gentleman prayer. The prayer they prayed at Jericho that brought down the wall wasn't, wasn't a gentleman prayer. It wasn't, there was nothing ladylike in the prayer of that day. You must insist that God will arise for you tonight. We had a program in Akure several years ago, the Congress, the whole weekend. Then we finished, and everybody was going. We have already dispersed. And then a man came and blocked my way. I said, sir, we've already prayed. He said, ah. <laughs> I know. We have already dismissed everybody, he said, I know. Yes, then why are you standing in front of me? He said, because you are not going anywhere until you attend to my case. Ah, okay. So what's your problem? He had a factory. He had machines. He was doing very well. Married with children, and all of a sudden, all the machines broke down, and every effort to bring them back to life failed. The man who used to have a lot of money lost everything, and then he began to borrow. He borrowed so much from his friends that his friends, whenever they saw him coming, the friends ran. They are not asking him to pay back. They are running so that he won't borrow more. And there was no food in the house. And children will cry and cry from morning to evening. No food to eat. They will cry themselves to sleep. The wife couldn't bear it anymore. So the wife went mental. He had no money to take the wife to the hospital, so he took the wife to a herbalist and abandoned her there. He said, that's my problem. So you're not going anywhere until you do something about that. Said, All right. I asked him to serve for his sign. He did. I laid my hands on his sign, prayed a simple prayer. I said, go home. Lay your hands on your machine, on your wife, and so on. The anointing will destroy the yoke. He went home, laid his hand on the machine. Without any further repair, the machine began to work. He went to where the wife was, laid his hand on the wife. The wife jerked up as if coming out of a deep sleep and said, what am I doing here? By the next time I heard about him, he had been made the traditional ruler of his village, and he was riding a brand new car. Before we leave tonight, I'm going to anoint your hands. But right now, you are going to stand on your feet, you are going to cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Arise for me. Open your mouth and cry unto him. Arise for me. Whatever you are drink, suspend it, Lord. You must arise for me. Arise for me. Right now. Arise, oh Lord. And let your enemies be scattered. Arise, Lord. Arise for me today. Arise for me today. Arise for me today. And scatter all my enemies. I am in a storm. I'm not 
pretending. I know I'm fighting battles. Arise for me, Lord. Arise for me. In the mighty name of Jesus, arise for me today. Arise for me today. I can't fight my battles alone. Father, arise for me. Arise. Arise for me. I need help urgently. Arise for me, Lord. Arise for me, Lord. Arise for me. Arise. Arise for me today, today, not tomorrow. Now, arise for me, Lord. Uh -uh. I know you are in me. So arise now. Arise for me. Arise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, the, 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 the prayers of tonight are so crucial. And the word of God says, if two of you shall agree, as touching anything we ask or not, it will be done for us by Father in heaven. Please join your hands together and cry to God one more time. I say, Father, arise for my neighbor. Go, go on, cry to the Almighty God. For arise, arise for my neighbor, arise for my neighbor, Lord. Ah. The two of us are in agreement. Arise for my neighbor. Almighty God, arise for my neighbor. Arise. Wake up, Lord, wake up. Arise for my neighbor. Arise for my neighbor. Arise for my neighbor. Please, Lord, arise for all these, your children. Arise for us. Arise. Almighty God, arise. Ramoko Shekerandra Mahapatanda. Arise, O oh Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Arise for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated.